Hi everybody, how are you doing? I don't know whether you know the power of conviction. You know, whenever you are convicted about something, there's something about conviction that will make you do amazing, amazing things. Now, if you look at the Oxford Dic Dictionary, they basically means conviction is the strong belief of something. You know, it, it also means it is, it's, it's giving yourself totally into something without any form of doubt within yourself. You are sure and you are certain about it. That's what conviction is all about. And you need to understand that whenever you have conviction, conviction will always move or cause you to move. Conviction has a way of pushing. There's something about conviction that is almost the same as a woman who is pregnant and just about to deliver and starts getting contractions. You know, when a woman is about to deliver and those contractions come, those contractions are not in her control, by the way. You know, some of us who are men, when we look at a woman in that, the labor pains and we see her behaving the way she's behaving, sometimes we think she's the one who is controlling them. And sometimes we may even think like telling her, well, just, just do it in a certain way. You know, we may think of that. But the truth of the matter is, the contractions that come upon a woman, they are involuntary. It's the same thing with conviction. Whenever you are convicted about something, I remember when I got convicted and I decided to, to accept the gift of, of salvation and accept the life of Christ into me. When I did that, it was out of a conviction. I was out of control. I could not be able to, to, to say no to it because there was something in me that was just telling me this has to be done now. You see, that's what conviction is all about. It is a strong thing. It has a passion in it. It causes you to be focused. It causes you to be committed on something. You know, you know, whenever you have conviction of something, it will cause you to go to overlook everything else that might be a barrier, that might be a hindrance, that might be a problem in as far as stopping you is concerned. People who have a conviction, they will not allow anything to hinder them. And one of the things that I hope and pray that I can be able to activate in you, I can be able to bring and cause to arise in you is the conviction of becoming wealthy. That's my job here. I have no other job. You, you can, people will teach you other things and people will tell you other things, but my primary reason for doing what I'm doing is to bring you to a place where you are so convicted about the issues of financial wealth, about wealth creation, that you will rise up and you will do anything it takes to make sure that you change your financial status. I need you to come out of the place where you are in poverty or where you are in lack or where you are struggling financially or you are in distress. You know, it's amazing. There are people who have money and yet they are still poor. I still want us to deal with those kinds of people. They have money and they are poor. Why am I saying they are poor? They are poor because number one, mentally they are still poor. Number two, their financial behaviors are pathetic. Their financial habits are terrible. And therefore they are living a life of poverty, but yet looking like they have much. They are struggling from end to end. They are struggling from this to the other. They are looking like they have, but they are poor. That's even worse than a person who does not have. At least a person who does not have, everybody knows he does not have. The worst person is the one who seems to be heavy and yet they are living in poverty. But listen, I want to bring you to a place where you can now wake up today with a new conviction and say, you know what? Enough is enough. I will have a new passion. I will have a new zeal. I will have a new drive in as far as my life is concerned. I will no longer allow myself to be in this kind of a state again. Why is that so? Because there is a powerful conviction in me that and I'm going to make it and I'm going to do it. You will not allow yourself to be in a place of procrastination. Procrastination basically means when you have conviction, you don't keep on postponing issues here and there. You will not be in a place where you are saying that there is this obstacle and there is that obstacle where you are giving excuses for this and giving excuses for the other. No, 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 no. Why? Because you are fully convicted. People who have conviction are persuaded. They have surety. They have certainty. 
I don't know if that's an English word. They are certain about things. You know, they wake up. They may not be having it right now. But because of that conviction in them, that thing that is driving them. I want you to go back and look for a video that I've talked about activating your prayer drive. People who have conviction are actually people who have activated their prayer drive. They have something in them that is just driving them. They are not allowing any obstacle, anything that can tell them no to be on their way. They don't allow a negative energy to be around them they don't listen to things that are telling them that it is not possible they don't read or watch things that are telling them it is impossible no 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 those people they are decided you know what i am getting this no matter what i am getting this no matter what i am asking you today as you're listening to me that you get into that place wake up and have that kind of a conviction that's what is driving me every day to today. That is what is making me do whatever I do every day. That's what makes me go looking for the money. I have the conviction because there's somewhere I want to find myself in. When I wake up in the morning, I see chingly, 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 chingly. I see millions all over. I see those dollar signs running across my head every day. Every time I'm driving, I see those dollar signs running across me. Every time I'm speaking to people, I see those dollar signs. Why? Because I have a conviction of becoming a millionaire. I have a conviction of becoming at the top. I don't want to talk about three zeros. I don't want to talk about four zeros. I want to talk about five zeros, not even six zeros. I want to see myself talking about seven and eight zeros in as far as my monies are concerned. Right now, by the grace of God, I am able to confidently talk about one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. But listen, I am getting very soon out of the six zero levels and I'm going to start talking about the seven zeros. Why is that so? Because the day I got conviction and I decided enough of struggling is enough. That is the day I rose up and started driving. That is why I'm doing all the things that I can be able to do. I'm writing my books. I'm, I'm, I'm do, talking to clients. I'm doing my business. I'm doing this. All these things that I'm doing is because I have a conviction that I must succeed and I must see my money increasing to the millions and the millions that I so much desire. Conviction is a key thing. There's a story in the Bible in the book of Mark chapter number 5 verse number 34. You can read the whole of that chapter 5. As a woman who the Bible says she had an issue of blood, an issue of blood in her life. She had an issue in her life, the issue had to do with the flow of blood in her life. The Bible says, it records, she had had that issue for 12 good years. In other words, for 12 years, this woman was struggling, this woman was toiling, this woman was struggling and struggling and struggling. I'm sure within those 12 years, her resources had gone. I'm sure within those 12 years, her identity had gone. Why is that so? Because you see, when you have an issue like that, people don't want anything to do with you. And not only that, people tag you and call you something. I'm sure those people in that village or in that city kept on calling her by the name or by the issue she was struggling with. They would probably be discussing someone they would say oh by the way have you seen so and so and they would ask each other which so and so oh the one who has an issue of blood the one who has a problem the one blood is always flowing out you know she could not come she could not be together with people in a community she had issues that must have stolen her identity i'm sure she was a woman who was living miserably and living in shame some of you are living like that today because your story, as far as your finances are concerned, is so bad. You are a man who is always in debt. You are a woman who is always refusing to pay people their money. You are always borrowing. You are always this and you are always that and you are always this and trying this, blah, blah, blah. That's how people identify you. You have lost your identity because that is an issue in your life that needs to be dealt with. That is why you need to understand just like this woman. And I'm going to tell you in a minute, the Bible records very clearly that this woman who had actually lost identity, I'm sure the Bible says she had seen all physicians, meaning all her money was completely gone. She had lost all her money. She had lost in things in her life. In fact, I'm sure that woman must have lost enthusiasm. She must have become weak. She was no longer able to move. She must have become slow in as far as things are concerned because she had an issue that was troubling her. Now, some of you, uh, just to mention, but a few, I'm sure you have issues that you're struggling with issues that have also probably made you stop being enthusiastic about things a deal fell and you feel like you don't want to continue again something went wrong and you don't feel like you want to go on again oh you are feeling unenthusiastic your zeal is gone your enthusiasm gone is your passion is dead you just want to sit there and just wait for whatever is going to happen because you don't think there's any hope 
This man here is letting you know there is some hope, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. All I'm asking you, this woman, one day she heard that Jesus was passing by. And the Bible says when she had it, she made up her mind. You know what? I'm going to rise up and I'm going to go to where he is. And I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. And I know I'm going to be healed. The point I want to bring across is not about the miracle of healing. No, the point I want to bring across is that this woman had a conviction when she heard Jesus was in the neighborhood. She got convicted and she said, you know what? There's a solution. An answer has just landed my way. Some of you right now, as I'm speaking, an answer has just landed your way. Me, my voice coming to you is actually an answer to your issues right now. All you needed to hear is somebody tell you, come on, raise up. You can do it. You know, stop asking why. Stop getting so much using excuses and using all kinds of things to keep you down. Listen, raise up. Get yourself convicted again and say, you know what? If I did it once, I can do it again. Even if you never did it any time, you can still start doing it now. You know, the woman had to struggle through the crowd. The very people who were insulting her, the people who had thought she was not fit to be in the society. She went through them. She went against all odds, against all obstacles, against anything that could hinder her. And when she did that, she arrived at her destination. And what was her destination? Her destination is touching the hem of Jesus' government. And that is the place where her miracle was found. Listen to me, my friend. The same thing with you. Today you can rise up with a new conviction. Come up with a new conviction. Decide, you know what? I have been down for a while, but I'm not staying down. I have been in this scenario for a while. I've been having this issue for a while, but I am not staying this way. My finances have been in this status for a while, but I have decided I am not staying this way. When I decided that in my life, I was a pastor for many years. And you know, pastors, sometimes we can really survive. Not all of them. Some are doing very well, but sometimes pastors can really, really survive. But then I realized, you know what? Being a pastor does not hinder me from making money with my hands because God says he blesses the works of my hand. He says whatsoever thing I find to do with my hands it shall prosper. And I, when I read that, Psalms chapter number one, when I read that, I said, you know what? Anything I try to do in life, God says he shall cause it to prosper. He also says that I'll be like a tree that is planted by the river. Said that one tree that flourishes, that tree that does well. You know, I, and I told myself, listen to me, I don't have to struggle anymore. I had a new drive in me. And that is the drive that has made me be where I am today. Today, I can celebrate myself and say, thank God I took that decision after I got the conviction. That woman made the decision to go to where Jesus was. It was a conviction that pushed her and made her go through the obstacle, go her through the embarrassment and the shame, come out of her comfort zone and get to a place where she could now say, I have received my breakthrough and I have received my miracle. The problem with many people out there is that you are too concerned about what other people are saying. You are too concerned about the views and the opinions of others. You are too concerned. You are too concerned. And that concern is actually hindering you. It's an obstacle in your life. You have to deal with that obstacle. You have to say, you know what? This week, this day, this month, my life is changing. This year, my life is changing. I will not allow people to be my problem. I will not allow people to be my hindrance. I will not allow their opinion to tell me that I cannot do it because I know I can do it and I know I can make it. I don't know I'm talking to you who right now, but I am known from these words, there's something that is getting quickened in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind. Do everything that you can. Do everything that you can to make sure you get your financial release and your financial breakthrough. Now listen to me. God has already promised that it is he who gives us the power to create wealth. Creating of wealth is given to us. All we need to do is to understand how to do it. And these are some of the things that I'm giving to you in every teaching I give you every day. That you can rise up and change your financial status. If the people are driving that kind of a car, you can even drive a better kind of a car than that. If the people are flying that kind of a flight, you can also fly in that kind of a flight. If they are, if they are owning those kinds of planes, you can also own your own plane. Who said you cannot own a plane? Personally, I'm trusting God that I'm going to one day fly my own personal jet. That is me. That's what I'm believing. I've said it out there in the air. Now some of you are looking at me and I say, hey, hey, listen to me. All things are possible if you put your mind to it and then you have the conviction 
towards it and conviction for it and start going towards it. God always, always waits for you to have the conviction and start taking action. The moment you start doing that, he starts bringing ideas. He starts bringing things and resources and people and what have you to come your way to make sure your dream becomes a reality. Have the conviction today. Stop sitting back there and enthusiastic and full of no passion or having no passion. Stop that. It's a bad thing. Just rise up like this woman. Go through the crowd and receive your financial miracle. Let's meet in the field of the millionaires. And remember, every video I bring to you is because my desire for you is for you to develop and to rise up to become a better person. I love you. See you again in the next video. And thank you for listening. If you're able to subscribe, if you're here for the first time, go ahead and subscribe. If you're able to like, if you're able to comment, I would be very excited to hear from you. Thank you and God bless you and bye-bye.